Oh, good morning. How are you? I'm uh, very well. <clears throat> it's a bit chilly. It's not really chilly this morning. Actually, the weather's been quite nice lately. You're a bit dark there, aren't you? There we are. Let me lighten you up a bit. <laughs> Feel the thing I'm talking to myself. I'm not. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Anyway. What's up? What's up? What's up? It's a big day today. Massive. Massive. Something's happening today that you won't see reported on the news, and yet it's an, a, a world-changing event, an earth-shaking event. And most people won't even understand why or the importance of it, so I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis. You know me, if there's a dental connection, I will find it. But I think with this one I might struggle a bit, because it's about the Chinese currency, the yuan, and petrol and gold <laughs> gold there's your link gold gold crowns what's it going to do to the price of gold crowns anyway why is march 26 going to be it's going to you know what happened in 1913 what happened in 1971 can you name have you memorized these dates no nobody knows these dates and yet they're absolutely earth-shattering dates 1971 was when Nixon took the United States off the gold standard. The government reneged on its promise to buy back dollars for gold. If people would prefer the gold than the dollars, they said, don't worry, we'll give you the gold. And then they uh, changed their mind and said, no, if you want something for $10 note, we'll give you two $5 notes. Trust us, we're solvent. 21 trillion dollars in debt later anyway that's not the point the point is for a long time for a long long time going back to Bretton Woods I think was 1948 the United States had come out of the Second World War rather well and <clears throat> was a very wealthy nation exported a lot you know made was like the Chinese are now the Americans were then Everything that was any good in the world was made in America. And they had them running a massive trade surplus and they were using the trade surplus to buy gold. And they were sitting on this big pile of gold and the dollar was a fantastically strong currency because at that time it was linked to gold so they couldn't print it out of existence. And uh, they came to a deal with the oil producing countries, most notably Saudi Arabia, that Saudi Arabia would only accept payment in dollars for oil. And the thing is, everybody needs to buy oil. So everybody had to buy dollars to buy the oil. Saudis didn't want a ragtag bag hodgepodge of currencies, or everyone buying oil in their own national currency subject to use and abuse. They said, no, you want to buy oil, you've got to buy it in dollars. So if you want to buy oil, first of all, you had to buy dollars off the United States. And the United States was very happy to supply these dollars. Basically, they just printed them and sold them. And so people like China, for example, who wanted to buy oil, China had to buy dollars off the United States and then they would give the dollars to the Saudi Arabians. The Saudi Arabians became very wealthy because of their oil reserves, but also because they what the effect of it was that the dollar became the world, effectively the world currency because the commodity that's traded most on a worldwide basis is oil. Now, the problem is that the, uh, the countries that are um, getting, uh, receiving dollars in exchange for their goods so, for example, the uh, Saudis and the Chinese, who export a lot to the United States and get, get paid in dollars, um, have got to do something with these dollars. So what they did was they, to a certain extent, they bought property and businesses in, in the United States, uh, but mostly they bought uh, IOUs from the Treasury. They, they gave them the dollars back and got these things called treasury bonds, which are 
supposedly a very, very safe form of government debt that pays interest. So China and uh, the Saudis, Saudis, Saudis actually incidentally repaid the United States by blowing up the Twin Towers, which is a bit ungrateful, isn't it, you think? A bit like having a spoilt bratty son who nicks your Mercedes and crashes it into a tree. <clears throat> but um, anyway, that's by the by. So anyway, this, this uh, arrangement led to the dollar being the petrodollar, as it was called, being the sort of the supreme currency. And as a result, the Americans were able to print dollars, pretty well ad infinitum, and uh, exp expand, inflate their money supply. But it didn't result in domestic inflation of prices because what they were doing, they were sending them all abroad. So prices in the United States were stable. There was no rampant inflation and uh, everyone else got stuck with a load of dollars that they didn't know what to do with other than buy, buy more stuff off the Americans. Anyway, the Chinese uh, decided that they're not very happy with this because they're fed up with, uh, because for example, if the Chinese want to buy oil off the Russians, they are having to buy dollars off the United States to give to the Russians. And uh, the Chinese didn't really want uh, rubles. <laughs> and the Russians didn't really want the yuan either. So everyone stuck with the dollar because at least in the dollar you could, it was liquid, you know, you could sort of spend it if you needed to. Everyone accepts a dollar. So, um, but uh, the, the problem is that uh, it, gave, it gave the Americans far too much power on a worldwide basis. It gave them, you know, if they said that they're going to cut you out of their banking system and not going to, American banks are not going to receive or give you any more dollars, then Basically, you were stuck because no more oil, you know. So, what happened was the Chinese and the Russians, in particular, were fed up with this. Russian, a very, very large uh, oil exporting nation, with ambitions to be uh, an importer of Chinese goods in the same way that the states are, and uh, you know, want all the middle class luxuries of life. And uh, the Chinese, the world's largest importer of oil. So, <clears throat> what happened was the Chinese decided that the only way to uh, give anyone any confidence in the yuan, if they were going to start buying things in yuan, was to give them an unconditional guarantee that if at any time they were unhappy with their yuan, they could change them for gold. They could you know, just cash them in and they'd give them the yuan value of the gold. So in effect, the, the yuan became gold-backed in the same way as the dollar was gold-backed prior to 1971. And 1971 is when it, things started to go seriously wrong for the dollar in terms of its purchasing power. They, you know, because the government able to print it without any restraint after 71 just printed and printed and printed as much as they want. So um, so what's happened is the Chinese have introduced a gold-backed Petro Yuan. I told you it has nothing to do with dentistry, didn't it? But it's important, okay? Don't worry about the waves on the beach when you should be looking at the level of the ocean. Grasshopper. So for the last few years, the Chinese have been buying gold through uh, Belgium, through, uh, not Belgium, that's where they sell their treasuries, through Belgium. They, they, they buy it through uh, places like uh, Singapore and Hong Kong and Shanghai, offshore, offshore islands, where there's some sort of liquid gold market. And what they've been doing is they've been they've quietly scaled back their treasury purchases. I think in preparation for today, because today is the day when it goes live. The Petro Yuan, the gold-backed Petro Yuan, goes live today, March 26, 2018. 
and already there's about a billion and a half dollars I suppose is everything still measured in dollars but a billion and a half dollars worth of interest in it what is so what is it exactly well if you're Texaco and you've got refineries and you've got petrol stations you need to buy oil it's your input you know your, your, what you input so so what you do is you strike an agreement with an oil producer to buy so many barrels of oil at a certain price at some date in the future and you manage your risk by doing this because uh, your costs are, to put it simply, your costs are predictable. You know, you know, three months, six months, a year, two years, three years, five years ahead. You know, not usually five years because that, that, that's far too far ahead for anyone to see what's going to happen. But anyway, but you can you can sort of plan based on the knowledge that whatever the world oil price is, you're going to be able to buy oil at X price and it may sometimes it's less in which case you make a loss and sometimes the actual price is more in which case you made a profit so that's very simply what a futures contract is <coughs> and um, but the thing is that uh, these contracts are now denominated in yuan so people are what, what it's going to do is it's going to mean that in, in particular China and Russia are going to come to an accommodation whereby Russia sells oil to China because China to be honest is fed up with funding the United States trade deficit everybody in China is working hard long hours for low pay to enable the Americans to afford their SUVs even though they can't on the basis of how hard they work the Americans can't afford any of the stuff that they enjoy so the Chinese are the Chinese I think have got fed up with this arrangement and uh, the Russians are subject to economic sanctions and so they don't really they'd rather not have anything to do with dollars because they are excluded from the worldwide you know the, the Visa MasterCard sort of SEPA SWIFT system the, the international settlement system as far as I know doesn't include Russia because they're under economic sanctions and so uh, they're like uh, they have to have their own internal system because um, they're not, you know, and it doesn't interface with the world system, so there are an economic disadvantage as a result. So this system, it works quite well, you know, it works quite well for everybody except the United States. And the problem... Hello, someone's just gone off into a field. So uh, yeah, sorry, I was just wondering whether to go back and help, because she's literally, this car's just gone off the side of the road, turned over into the field, and there's a young girl on her phone, and another bloke on her phone. So expect some flashing blue lights shortly. I'm assuming there's nobody in the car. It doesn't look like there was. Oh dear, see something every day, don't you, on the way to work? I was sitting in a cafe on Saturday morning and a group of kids dressed up as penguins walked past, like 20 penguins just walked past the cafe. Couldn't make this stuff up. So, <laughs> that was funny actually. Uh, so yeah, so this works quite well for everybody except the Americans and the dollar. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a bit like uh, being massively in debt and then finding that uh, nobody wants to buy your goods anymore. Their goods being dollars. I mean, that's their main export, the United States, is the dollar, the actual dollar bill. That's the, that's the main thing they make an export. Not, not goods or services. 
but uh, it's going to work out quite well because anyone who uh, accepts one, uh, anyone who accepts one in, in return for oil, who can't spend, you know, he's going to well, want to spend the one in China, won't they? So the Saudis, if they accept the one for oil, are going to be able to import a ton more stuff from China. And if they don't want the yuan and they want to get rid of it, the Chinese will just give them gold. And there's no way the Saudis don't like gold. So then if they want to, they can sell the gold and buy dollars. Well, they won't. They'll, I don't know. Stick it in the uh, National Sovereign Wealth Fund. Hold it in reserve. But uh, nobody's going to want to hold dollars soon. So, anyway, March 26, 2018, birth of the Petro One, as opposed to the Petro Dollar, which is uh, backed by nothing and can buy nothing. Pretty much. Since it came off the, uh, the gold standard in 71. I mean, we might, in days to come, we might look back on this day and say that was the mate, you know, that was the day it all changed. Nothing's going to change today. In fact, the BBC's not even reporting it. So, their opinion of whether it's important or not, and my opinion, are two completely different things. Uh, whereas I tend to take a more a globalist perspective, I would say, on economics. The BBC tends to stick to. Uh, cooking programs, antique programs, and house flipping programs. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you anymore with the uh, Petro One. I've told you, that's all you need to know. What does it matter, I mean, what, does it, what difference does it make to us? That's what my wife said this morning, she said, what, is it, what difference is it going to make to us? And I think the answer is if the the dollar the dollars people are not going to want dollars. Why would you why would you hold dollars that are you know where they've had quantitative easing <clears throat> one two and three? They're about to go into quantitative easing four, the big one, you know, bigger than the other three combined probably. Why would you hold a dollar? It's going to be inflated. Don't forget, there's only three ways that the Americans can get rid of their debt. 21 now, just turned 21 trillion. Uh, we're expected to go up another one and a half trillion this year, and that's even without the the one over one trillion spending package that Trump has just signed. Why would you want to hold a dollar? Things are only valuable because they're useful and scarce. And dollars are certainly useful because you can buy stuff with them and you can settle debts and pay your taxes and stuff like that. But people don't realise that they're not, they're absolutely not scarce anymore. So why would you want to, the only way they can get out of debt is to inflate their way out of debt, which means that they just print so much money that they might owe you a billion pounds, but all a billion pounds will buy is a sandwich. So you can inflate your debt away or you can start becoming fiscally responsible, in other words, live within your budget and start having a budget surplus and using the surplus to pay down the debt. And that's, first of all, you'd have to fall, have fallen off the top of a Christmas tree to believe that they're gonna, that's gonna happen. And, and it's mathematically impossible for them to pay down the debt anyway because no amount of, no amount of fiscal responsibility will, um, would put them in that position, mathematically impossible. On the third way of doing it is to um, default on all the debt and just ring up the Russians and say, uh, all that, all those treasury bonds you're holding, I'm afraid we are not gonna, we're just gonna cancel that. Not only are we not gonna pay you the interest on it, we're not even gonna pay you back what you paid for it. It's, it's worth this, it's worth a scrap of paper. And uh, they'd have to ring up the Saudis, and they'd have to ring up the Japanese, and they'd have to ring up the Belgians, and uh, you know, and just say treasury bills are worth nothing. And treasury bills are supposed to be the the most secure type of debt. 
It's actually owed by the government that owns the printing presses and can print the money should they wish to. So nobody defaults on treasury debt, it's blue, it's blue chip debt. You always get that back. And as such, it's, it's called risk-free debt, risk-free. There's no chance of you not getting it back. And it's the yardstick, the, the interest rate for this risk-free debt is the yardstick for all other debt, the risky debt. And so if the risk-free debt stopped getting repaid, then everyone like me that owed money to my bank for my dental surgery, would we would all default on our debt as well. <laughs> because our debt is more risky than the government debt. Who is going to pay their debt back? If the government's not bothering to pay the debt back, then no one would pay. The whole world financial system would fall apart. And they'd have to ring up the firefighters and say, I'm sorry, you get paid out of the public purse. We're going to default on your pensions. They're going to have to default on everybody's pensions. They'd have to default on Medicare. They'd have to default on Medicaid. <laughs> but that is not going to happen either. So we could scrub option three, okay? So we've scrubbed option two, which is to become fiscally responsible. We've scrubbed option three, which is to default. And so we're left with option one, which is to inflate the debt away, which is why they're seeking a 2% inflation rate every year. They're hoping they can inflate the debt by reducing the purchasing power of dollars to get out of trouble. But uh, anyway, that's a whole other story about zero percent interest rates and the problems that you get into when you leave interest rates at zero. So get out of dollars. It's the dollar tanks, the pound's going to tank. I'm telling me the pound's going to do brilliantly if the dollar, if the dollar goes up to... Anyway, get out of dollars. Alright, talk to you later, bye.